Uh, next, I'd like to talk to you about some other aspects of the electric field, in particular, the breakdown electric field that causes an electric current to flow in the air. Now, it turns out if we get the electric field to a value of 30,000 volts per centimeter or greater, we can make the air undergo electrical discharge. Let me show you that by turning on the uh, Van de Graaff generator here, charging it up, and then uh, bringing my uh, knuckle over nearby. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and <laughs> that's what I wanted to talk about, is the electrical breakdown voltage. Now, what happens when that, when the field becomes strong enough, and I make the field stronger as I bring myself over closer, to the Van de Graaff generator, the field gets strong enough to where the air itself becomes a conductor and the electrons leave very rapidly, leave that negative sphere, jump over onto my body. I can demonstrate that a little more uh, quantitatively and a little more consistently by using this other sphere over here as the uh, positive uh, sphere, uh, connecting it over to the base of the Van de Graaff generator. So that now when we turn the Van de Graaff generator on, we will be taking electrons from this sphere through the wire, through the base, up the belt, and depositing them over onto this sphere, which had just a little bit of residual charge. Now I've taken that pretty much onto my body, and uh, so I might have a little bit of excess charge, but immediately it gets discharged uh, into the air and into the room. So let's assume that everything now is pretty much neutral, we have a neutral sphere here, a neutral sphere here. I'm going to turn the uh, current on uh, to the motor that powers this Van de Graaff generator. We're going to charge up the Van de Graaff generator and uh, watch what happens when I bring this positive sphere over near the negative sphere. Uh, you hear that crackling sound, and what's happening there now is that the negative sphere is discharging either to the wire or to the base and uh, so that zapping takes place when the field builds up to that value. Now I can uh, increase the electric field between these two spheres by bringing this positive sphere over near the negative sphere and when they get close enough together to where the field is strong enough we'll see that arcing take place. Oh, there we go. I actually didn't feel that. The sound of it just startled me a little bit. And so what's happening now is that electrons are jumping from the negative sphere to the positive sphere and then being pumped up by the rubber belt back up to the top. So we have a constant flow of uh, electrons, although it comes in spurts. Charges up for a few seconds or a fraction of a second and then very suddenly discharges in a much shorter time and uh, quickly uh, then charges up again. Let me turn the lights down so that shows up a little better. And if the electric field for uh, breakdown is 30,000 volts per centimeter, we have an arc of about uh, a little more than 10 centimeters there. So that would correspond to a voltage a little greater than 300,000 volts. We have uh, almost a half a million volts there between these two spheres at a distance of uh, around uh, 15 centimeters. At a shorter distance, the uh, amount of charge required to get to the critical field becomes less, so it charges up quicker, and the time between pulses is smaller, is shorter. Further away, it takes a little longer time for that charge to build up to where we get that critical electric field of 30,000 volts per centimeter. Now, let me turn the lights back on and uh, we'll do one other experiment here. I'm going to separate these far enough to where the arcing does not take place between the two spheres and then show what happens when I bring a, uh, a conducting rod up, this, this metal rod, between the two spheres and essentially short out that airspace between the two. And uh, let's see if we can observe what happens there. So with the conductor, it's conducting electricity from one sphere to the other. It jumps from the negative sphere to the rod, 
through the rod over to the positive sphere and uh, you can maybe see that arcing take place uh, between the sphere and the rod and then the electrons flow rather easily through the rod over to the other sphere. Let me turn the lights down so you can see that arcing just a little better. Again, the electric field breakdown in the air is 30,000 volts per centimeter. But the uh, field to push the electrons through the rod is very, very small. The rod is a good conductor of electricity. The electrons flow very easily from one atom to the next through the metal conducting rod. If I were to bring an insulating rod up there, we would find that the electrons do not flow nearly so easily through an insulator as they do through a conductor. Turn the lights back up again so you can see uh, just exactly what we have here. Here I have a piece of plastic-like material that's an insulator. The insulating rod does not conduct electricity nearly as easily as does the conducting rod.